Hi. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about training data. And in particular, I want to show off a trick to improve your machine learning model by changing the data instead. You see, in general, machine learning pipelines work in such a way that you start out with data, then you use that to construct a model, which in turn generates predictions. It's usually these predictions that we care most about, which is why a lot of effort is sometimes spent in tuning the hyperparameters of this model. That could lead to better predictions. However, since the model is dependent on data, you could also wonder if making an improvement here might make a more meaningful impact on the model, which in turn might make a very meaningful impact on the predictions as well. So what I would like to do in this video is show you a specific trick that you might be able to do, particularly in the realm of chatbots, that don't involve tuning the model. And for this demo, I'm going to be using the financial demo project on GitHub. It is one of Raza's demo projects meant to showcase some features that could be interesting in a financial use case. And the data that we'll be using is the data that you can find in the nlu.yaml file, which practically contains data for a classification. I'll zoom in just a bit. But for example, if a user says, are you real? Then we'd like to classify that the user is uttering a intent called check human. The goal is that we take utterances like this and attach a label. And there's a couple of these examples and intents. Checking for being a human is one. Then there's also a intent for affirming. There's another intent that will ask for a transfer charge. And there's a whole bunch of them. So let's see what happens if we train a very basic machine learning model on this data set. And let's then also think about what we might be able to do to make the model better. So let's make a very basic model. I have a data frame with the intents as well as the examples. And for good measure, this is the input of the model and this is what we're trying to predict. And what I'm going to do is just make a very basic model that allows me to iterate very quickly. So I'm going to make a pipeline that just has a count factorizer as well as a logistic regression. So this would be a very basic bag of words model. Now I'm using this approach specifically just to make my iteration speed go faster. If you're actually using Raza, I would recommend you use the standard diet algorithm instead. But let's just check for this one simple model, what kind of mistakes that it makes. The pipeline is now trained and that means that I can now have a look at the confusion matrix. And here's what the confusion matrix looks like. Now, just to emphasize, the way that you should read this graphic is that there are some labels that we are predicting, which are shown here on the x-axis. And then there are also some true labels attached to some of these rows. The way you should then read this chart is to say, well, if there's a lot of bins here that are filled on the diagonal over here, then that's a good thing because that indicates that we are not making many mistakes. However, we can see that there are indeed a couple of instances where we are making some mistakes. And there's a pattern in the mistakes that we're making. You see, it seems like most of the mistakes are happening here. Not all, but certainly a whole bunch. And it seems like we're making many, many mistakes when the true label is in form. We are certainly also predicting the inform class correctly a whole bunch of times, but looking at this, there is an interesting pattern. It seems like the inform class just has a lot of examples. And that might help explain why it's so often confused with other classes. After all, the inform class occurs about five times as much as the help class. So if I were an algorithm and if I just had to guess, Guessing inform wouldn't be a bad strategy. So that means that we are currently dealing with a class imbalance. And one thing I do want to point out is that if you're dealing with class imbalance, that there are also algorithmic solutions to this. In fact, there's quite a few tools at our disposal to make improvements to the model such that it can deal with this class imbalance better. However, what we can also do in this particular case is just have a look at the data instead. 
After all, there is something about this inform class that might deserve an extra look. And if we are able to solve this problem on the data level, then odds are that we won't have to resort to algorithmic solutions. So let's look at the data now. So what I've done is I've opened up the data set in Google Sheets, and this allows me to just quickly get an overview of what's in here. So for example, I have examples from the check human intent that are listed here. And I can scroll down a bit and I will see the examples for a firm. Eventually, let's just make this a bit bigger. Uh, ask transfer charge, that's also a intent, check balance. But eventually I will hit the inform intent right over here. So what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is just have a look at what kind of text examples are in here. It seems like there are a couple of examples related to monetary amounts over here. And note that it helps to point out that there probably are some entity tags in the original data set that I'm not showing here. So it's likely that in the NLU.yaml file, you're gonna see something like this money tag attached, but we'll keep it in the CSV for now just because it's a bit easier to play with. Having said that, we have monetary amounts and that's followed by a different kind of utterance. These all seem to be related to dates. When I scroll down, I see a couple more examples. It seems like this is related to places where you can buy things. This is followed by a couple of examples where the user would like to have the current balance. And then we see some examples that are related to the type of card that you have. So that covers a lot of ground in terms of what this one intent does over here. This inform intent seems to be used for a bunch of purposes. Now, if you're used to Raza, then you might recognize that such an inform intent can actually be something that's useful inside of a form. We might have a Raza form where the user can transfer money. And in that case, we might first ask the user how much money needs to be transferred. And then the user can say, let's say $10, after which the assistant can ask from what account? And the user could say, well, take it from my credit card. And then in both of these cases, the whole point of this inform intent is basically a placeholder that allows the user to pass in a entity that can be turned into a slot value. And this is not unreasonable, but what's probably happening here is that over time, more and more entities got added to this large inform class. And that's probably why the inform label appears so often, but you can also imagine how having such a class that's so encompassing can also cause confusion with some of the other intents. So here's my proposal to this situation. What might be slightly better is if we take the original large inform class and if we just split that up. Technically, you could make the argument that lots of these examples are about informing about money. And that way the class is already a little bit more specific and therefore might also be easier to distinguish. Similarly, if we're asking about a date time, then we can just call that inform date time instead of being so general. And if you look below, you'll notice that I've done the same for informing about a location where the money should go, informing about the balance, informing about the account. And at the bottom here, there's a couple of extra examples shuffled in. But the whole point is that I'm taking this one big encompassing class that could cause a lot of confusion and that I've turned those into smaller subclasses. And here's where I might be able to make an interesting comparison. I have this one column over here that contains the original labels. And I have this column over here where I have the old labels as well as the new ones that split up the inform class like below. And it will be interesting to see if maybe the algorithm has an easier time in this situation than it has in this one. So let's check that. So I'm back in my Jupyter notebook and this is the old confusion matrix that I started with. And I'm about to move on to the other confusion matrix, which is the one that's trained on the exact same way, but with this inform intent split up into different subclasses. And here's what it looks like. As you can see, there's definitely more classes. That's because the inform intents here are split up. 
we can also see that it's not perfect. If I just zoom in on the confusion matrix that belongs to the former inform class, then it seems that within here, there's definitely still a couple of examples going awry. Similarly, I can also spot a couple of errors over here. There's a fair amount of errors even with the inform who and the deny class, which might deserve some extra attention. But what I can do in general now is I can just count how many off diagonal elements do I actually have in total? And is that more or less than what I started with? And it turns out in the confusion matrix before, I had 41 examples that were mislabeled. But in this new situation where I take the effort to make subgroups within the inform class, here I only have 21 examples that are misclassified. And this, I think, is actually pretty interesting because the algorithm is kept exactly the same. The only thing I've really done is just change the way that I label. And it seems that in doing so, I'm able to just be a bit more accurate. And that's something that deserves a little bit of extra attention, I think, because there's a couple of benefits. You see, not only am I changing the data such that the model just has an easier time with it, which in turn also means that my predictions might be more accurate, but in doing this, I also have seen the actual data. I like to think that I understand the problem a bit better because I was able to infer that the inform class that I was dealing with might just be too broad in scope. And given that I'm both understanding the problem a bit better as well as improving my model performance at the same time, I would argue that this attitude of iterating on your data as you're designing your assistant or as you're working on a machine learning problem might be time very well spent indeed. And note that I still think it's fair to point out that we can also just improve the model by tweaking the class balance parameters, perhaps. And note that if you're using Raza's diet algorithm, that a lot of this is taken care of for you. But I do really want to emphasize that this exercise of checking your data and rechecking your classes can really lead to an improvement. Having said all this, though, I also want to acknowledge that we're not quite done yet. We certainly might have improved our intent classification system, but that doesn't necessarily imply that our action prediction is also going to be better. We still need to make sure that the form that we're using is able to use these new inform intents, and that is still some work that needs to be done. That said, iterating on your data is just a really good idea.